All right, it's been a little bit since my last uh, video. Sorry about that. It's just been so busy with work and everything else going on. So um, I've got the engine for the 114 Hydro at the, uh, the machine shop. I've got some of the parts still left here. I've been busy sandblasting and cleaning up everything. I had to weld some holes that somebody drilled in the uh, seat pan. So it took me a little bit of time to get the steering wheel off the steering shaft, but I'm gonna credit uh, Brian Ford with giving me a good idea of using a gear puller uh, on that, I'm sorry, a bearing puller, put it on there and then uh, put pressure on it, hit it with uh, lubricant for multiple days, then tapped on the top of the, uh, oh, the screw that, that puts the pressure on for the, bearing puller, which I'm mind blinking on the name, but anyway, tapped on it, tapped on it, finally got that to pull off. So credit Brian Ford with giving me a great idea on how to get the steering wheel off without screwing up the steering wheel and uh, out using heat and I didn't screw anything up. So I've got all that stuff cleaned up. So now I've got my frame set up for my paint booth. Uh, this is my small paint booth. I can't fit a normal size tractor in there. It's just not wide enough. Um, I have my other paint booth back there in the corner, you can see the wood frame. That's what I set up when I do a bigger tractor. But anyway, um, tonight I'm hoping to put uh, my Visqueen on this cover. This is a Harbor Freight, uh, one of their little temporary garage things that uh, it's 10 foot wide, 17 foot long, but I only have two sections uh, set up. I don't need the whole 17 foot. I'll put Visqueen on the outside, uh, that box there, I'll put my uh, squirrel cage fan in it to pull my air through. I'll have filters on the back side. I'll have on the other end, I'll have a filter set up. I'll show you guys how I set up my paint booth. It works pretty well. I get a pretty good airflow through it and uh, keeps things clean. Uh, it seems to work for me. I did just talk to a guy about an inflatable paint booth uh, that they're using and they really like it, but I just don't know how that would work like overnight if you're going to leave parts to dry in there overnight you'd have to leave the thing inflated and I'm just not sure on that yet so anyway that's what uh where i'm working on uh i got the rear ends here i need to i fixed a couple leaks in this um it was leaking here around this shaft and there's two o-rings in there so i replaced those i fixed that leak but it was leaking someplace down in here and it still looks like it might be just a little bit damp but there's nothing on the floor tonight i wanted to check that because over the weekend i had a couple drips down there in about a 48 hour period and so anyway so now i don't i don't know what to do i don't want to get this thing done and then have a puddle under, under it all the time but i've never taken apart one of these hydro transmissions i can't find anybody who has that can kind of walk me through the process that's been a little frustrating, but I'm probably just not talking to the right people. But one thing I do need to do is clean the paint off that and uh, so I can paint it. And then I'll obviously mask off all this part that doesn't get paint and, uh, and get that repainted when I do the rest of the rest of the tractor. So that's where I'm at right now. I'm going to work on stretching some Visqueen and uh, as I get that kind of done i will uh i'll do a little more filming and show you how i do that and uh get my my paint booth set up all right so what i've done to this point is i put my roll of this queen on a old broom handle there so i can pull it up over top back down and then across the floor so i will uh drop it off of there and leave enough to go back down and connect on that end and uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, I'll cut, cut it there at the roll, and then I'll fan it out. So this roll, if I can remember right, is it's four mil clear, uh, 10 by 100. Got this at uh, Menards. I would rather have 12, but anyway, the 10 will work. When it's spread out, it basically will cover the whole uh, roof as you'll see in a few minutes after I do it and then then I'll put uh, two more pieces down the sides to tent in the sides and then I'll duct tape and staple what I did was on this frame I added uh, 
one by twos uh, furring strips on here and then I'd use self-tapping screws and I've put those at the top and the bottom on the sides. So then I can use a staple gun to staple my uh, Visqueen to it to hold it in place while I'm, uh, while I'm painting. And then on the ends, you'll see I'll do, um, add a couple more pieces of wood with self-tapping screws for uh, my venting. But uh, that's where it's at. I'm gonna spread this plastic out. I'm not gonna film it because invariably something goes wrong and you'll probably hear some choice words come out of my mouth when that happens because it'll slide off the top and this is like, it's probably a two person job but I basically do almost everything by myself. So rather than, uh, have you hear me um, talk to plastic about how much I dislike it? I'll just uh, spread it out and then I'll, I'll show you what happens when it's done. All right, so I've got my first bit of Visqueen stretched on. So I went, like I said, up over the top and back down across the bottom. I spread it out, <clears throat> used the good old uh, Gorilla duct tape <clears throat> to hold it on <clears throat> excuse me geez so what I've got is you know it's tented up on the inside I've got both sides done it kind of uh, it's set up I I like using the visqueen it's clear so it obviously it lets light in and then I can put additional lights on so I have it's very bright in the paint booth when painting yellow <clears throat> moline yellow it's important because it's such a transparent color you want to have a lot of light so you can make sure that you're getting good coverage. So the next thing I'll do, and I don't know, it, I got called out of here for a call that I forgot I had to make, uh, and I'm almost out of duct tape, and so I need to get more of that. Um, but the next thing I'll do is I'll take, I'll get a, a, make a run down along the side, I'll expand it out, and then connect it to the top, and then down at the bottom, and then I'll staple everything in. This is why I said I want, I like 12 foot wide Visqueen. If this were 12 foot wide on the sides here or it comes across, it would, it would be draped over here and I could have already stapled that. But I think when I bought this roll and I wanted to use it because I have it, but it was COVID and everybody was buying the Visqueen because we had to tent ourselves in every place. And, you know, keep the nasty germs out so I could only get 10 foot wide instead of 12 foot wide. So that's why I have this. So I'm going to use it up and then hopefully I can get some 12 foot wide uh, moving forward. So um, I'm going to, maybe I'll get some more of this done tonight. The problem is bad prior planning, almost out of tape. And the tape is the initial thing to get everything kind of hooked up. And then I use the tape to seal kind of around the corners um, so that I get good, you know, basically my airflow comes through where I'll cut holes and put my furnace filters in. So we'll uh, see, I thought I had another roll around here. I'm gonna look around a few minutes. All right, I just did this side real quick. Um, just used three pieces of tape to hold the top up until I could get some staples across that, that top one. It's long, so I take it up a little bit further on the top and then I'll put some duct tape on the outside to hold it up there, that edge, and then some on the inside to kind of seal that seal that seam down across there. And then I'll use tape on the, uh, the corners to seal these. There's extra along the bottom. I'll take that in underneath of the frame of the, uh, of the paint booth to kind of hold it down. And then I'll also staple along the bottom there. For my access in and out of the booth, what I do is I'll cut, generally, I'll cut a slit uh, in the plastic and then I'll put another piece of plastic across, which I'll anchor up the top so there's a, a piece of plastic across my slit. So after I go in, that comes across and seals up that slit. It works pretty well uh, to keep, um, you know, keep my airflow going through my filters. So I'm going to, uh, just going to get the other side hung tonight and uh, since I don't have enough tape to seal everything up I'll just get everything hung and then tomorrow night I will if I can stop and get some tape I'll get that done and then uh, if you could see I already put my my fan box in here and 
I'll do more explaining on that as I get to it, but I'll set my fan inside. I, I'll cut those holes are uh, expandable. Um, well, I guess duct work over there that then I can run outside the barn uh, to get my all my overspray outside the barn. And uh, so that'll be sitting in here. Um, but yeah, this is uh, Andy's cheap way to make a pretty effective paint booth. And you'll see, see how it works as I get this done. Um, hopefully it's worked every time so far. I painted, I guess all my painted stuff is next door right now. So uh, again, thanks to neighbor John for hooking me up and letting me store things over there because I don't have enough room in here. So I'm going to get this other side on and then we'll go from there. All right, so I uh, got everything on, did some taping. I got the bottom drawn inside. We'll go inside and I'll show you. So here's where I cut my slit and I'll hang another piece of plastic over this to help seal it. You can see on the floor here where I drug the Visqueen out and then I taped it down on both sides. So pretty well um, sealed up in here right now. I brought in my scroll cage fan out of an old furnace. Just realized that belt is getting a little worse for wear, but it'll be all right. I just brought in, these are my collapsible uh, ducting. I need to cut the plastic on the outside to draw those through. And then I have this cardboard on here, which will then go up against the far side. I put my uh, fan inside um, the box there. And then I'll put furnace filter. You can see all these staples here across the top where I put uh, furnace filter across that. That's where it draws the, uh, the air in um, from the paint. And this is the top for it over here that'll, that'll go on. So making some progress, getting the booth put together. Um, got quite a bit of space in here, a lot of headroom. The only thing I don't like about this frame, my wood frame, I can hang a lot of things from in here. I have to bring in ladders and different things if I wanna hang things. So I gotta get more creative in here because this frame is not near as heavy as the other. And then I'll, tonight I'll probably uh, get things set up down there for uh, my air intake uh, on that end. So I'm gonna work on getting my fan set up in here and cutting the hole in the plastic, getting the, the ducting drawn out, getting all that set up. And, uh, and then we'll work on doing the air intake on the far end. All right, I got my expandable ductwork pulled out through the holes that I cut in the plastic there. And got my filter on this side of the, uh, the fan box. And then inside, got my fan and my airflow. I probably... I have run two fans in here before when uh, when I'm painting big projects. On the small stuff I'm going to pay, be painting, I can run one fan. I probably don't need two ducts, but I'm doing it just to get better uh, airflow through. And then on the other end, I put a couple one by 2s across and then a stapled furnace filter on the inside here and then cut a hole in the plastic on the outside. So I'm going to have good airflow. So it'll come in, you know, my airflow will come through and then go down to the uh, the fan. And I've still got quite a bit of room in here to, to paint. And um, just so you know, the kind of filters that I get, I get these at Menards and I just buy this um, 30 by 24 by one true blue air filter. Um, fiberglass air filter and then I can cut it to size and make it work so it's basically I need to do a little bit of sealing amount of tape the tape I wanted to use I need to do a little more tape around those just to keep any overspray from coming out around there because there will be quite a bit of uh, force coming through but actually let me uh, I'll plug it in real quick and show you what happens when uh, the fan kicks on all right, I'm going to plug this in and uh, you'll see what happens when the fan kicks on. If I can get the, well, since the plug's bent a little. 
come on. Must have stepped on it. Oops. So, <laughs> forgot about that. Truck's in the way. But what happens is it uh, moves quite a bit of air through. It actually sucks in the sides. Sucks in, you know, it's I got some, uh, I guess it would be negative air pressure because it sucks sucks in the, the sides. It's, you know, there's more getting pushed out than what's going in. If I walk over to the other side, if I can get past my now inflated here where the door is, you can really see because I don't have the plastic on that yet. That's sucked in. If I pull it out, it sucks it right back. So, and I can feel when you step inside, you got a pretty good airflow. You can feel it flowing through from from the back to the front. So that's all good to keep my overspray down or keeping it down so you can see what's going on in here. So keep working on this and hopefully uh, we'll be painting some stuff soon. All right, I got all of my uh, paint stuff set up here. Uh, it's a little bit of a mess because I've done a little bit of painting. Uh, I helping a buddy out. He's got a Honda shadow that he wanted to change the color of so we did the tank and the side panels and the, uh, the fenders in here the other day base clear he wanted them the same color as uh, the new Ford Broncos are uh, which would be an odd color for a shadow because they never offered that just an older shadow that he was uh, just kind of playing around with it so Got a buddy, my buddy Rob's coming over today. We've got a couple pieces of dirt in the paint. We're gonna sand that out using some 1500 and then polish it back up. And there is a couple pieces on the front fender. And then somebody, I'm not gonna say who, maybe put a couple of little runs uh, in this side shield. So we'll try to sand those out too. I don't know who did that. The uh, finger's been pointed in multiple directions at this point, so we're I'm not taking responsibility and my buddy Rob's not taking responsibility either. So got to swap out the filter uh, on there after this painting this stuff because it was pretty uh, pretty well full up of uh, base clear. So I'll swap that out before I paint. And this weekend, hopefully I'm going to start on my uh, the 114 parts that are all out here sandblasted. So I'm going to... Uh, some of it's going to be in single stage and some of it will be in base clear. Basically the hood, the seat pan, the steering wheel pedestal, and the front grille will all probably be base clear and everything else will be in uh, single stage. The front axle, a lot of little pieces. I'll just use single stage on that. But I'm going to try base clearing everything else and see how that goes. So. That's where I'm at right now, and then eventually I'm going to get to all the engine parts. Those are going to be gloss black, and that's going to be uh, just rattle can high temp heat primer and then high temp heat paint on the engine. So, and the rest of the engine's still at the uh, machine shop. And the rear end, I still need to uh, finish prepping it and sandblaster getting all the paint off it and i don't have my leak all the way sealed but i'm trying to decide if i can live with uh with that much of a drip i don't know it's gonna be hard because this thing's gonna look like brand new or better than new so, so to have a drip but it's got to drip way up in and i don't know if i want to tackle tearing into that thing and i don't know i can't find anybody that's giving me advice on what to do on how to take that apart so we'll see uh but that's it for now and uh i will chronicle the painting of some of the rest of this stuff this weekend and then uh we'll go from there so my pile out here is just a little bit smaller because i moved some of the pieces in here i've moved the frame the front axle couple of flywheels, the gas tank over there, the brake pedal, and the steering shaft, and the other shaft here 
Uh, I'm gonna paint these today, so I got them in here and kind of got them hung. They're not probably the best uh, hung, but it'll work for what I'm gonna do. And uh, over here, I've got everything set up. So I'll start with epoxy primer, and then I will go to epoxy or primer sealer. It's a white primer sealer and then I go to paint. So if anybody's wondering what paint I use, this is the paint I use, Martin Sonor, uh, mixed at Napa, and I think it's pretty close. So I've got my hardeners here, my thinners. Uh, I've already gone in and, and uh, sprayed everything down and uh, wiped it down for so it's clean. So I'm gonna mix things up. It's hot today. Today in the shop, we are 91 degrees, so I'm gonna be sweating quite a bit once I get suited up. I'll put on a full paint suit, full mask. And uh, so we're gonna go through the process here of mixing things up. Uh, this has sat all winter, this uh, epoxy primer. So all the solids are gonna be settled down here in the bottom and it's gonna take a bunch of stirring before this is ready. So that's the first step is I gotta get that going. My gun's clean. I done a little bit of other painting for a buddy here a few weeks ago. So I'm gonna start working on the, stirring up the primer. Oh yeah, there's, it's uh, half this can is solid. So it's gonna take a little bit of stirring here to get all this stuff liquid again, or in a state that I can uh, start spraying it mentioned it's 91 outside today um, we are dry it it was raining pretty frequently here up until uh, a couple weeks ago and then it stopped and when it stopped it stopped so everybody's got crops in the grounds around here around here in Ohio and everybody's uh, really needing a shot of rain because I think everybody's got their crops in because uh, it the way that it uh, dried up, they were able to get in the fields, but now we got everything's up a couple inches and it's bone dry. So, boy, it's really settled. This is gonna take a while. Yeah, I'm gonna pause the camera because literally I'm probably gonna spend the next half hour just breaking up all the solids on the bottom of this can and then mixing it back up so that we get a consistency. But it's thick at the bottom, but the stuff at the top is super thin. When this is all mixed appropriately, it's a, it's a little bit, the whole thing's just a little bit thicker consistency, but hopefully I don't break a paint stick here. So I'm gonna pause this and then uh, when I get it a little bit uh, mixed up, then we'll, we'll resume. All right, took more like probably 10 minutes than a half hour, but I got it so that I can uh, move the stick around the bottom of the can. Nothing's solid down there, nothing's gummy. The bottom of the stick is pretty, uh, it's not built up on the bottom of the stick, so I know I got it pretty well mixed up, but you can see it's, the consistency is pretty thick. So what I'm gonna do on my primer, uh, my ratio is four, two to one. So I get my cup here. I got four two to one right there where my thumb is. I'm gonna mix that up. I'm probably gonna mix it probably about fours, which will give me about almost a full quart cup um, to get in there and do my primer. And then uh, I think that'll be enough. It should be one coat of this primer goes on pretty thick. This is always the fun part, pouring it in here without making a A huge mess it's still gonna probably make a mess it's just no way around it really you can hear the air dryer going off this is a good day to have the air dryer because it's hot and it's humid so I'm gonna get my cup set up here there's four 
of the primer. Go up to four with the reducer. The reason you reduce this uh, primer is it's it's so thick it doesn't spray right unless you do a little re reduction. And then I'm gonna take it up to four on the hardener. If I can get the can open here. It's the first time it's been open this year, so it's probably going to fight me. And we're at four on the hardener. paint stick back out and mix that up thoroughly. For right now I'm going to just cover my primer. I've had cottonwoods really bad this year. Seeds flying around and I don't really want any to get in there. This is an important st stage of the process. Make sure that you get all these mixed up very well before you put them in the gun. I have gotten in hurries before and uh, forgotten this stage. And you get in the booth and it's just not spraying out right. I had to come back out here and dump the cups, mix it up before I go back in. It's one of those moments that you're smacking yourself in the face saying, what was I thinking? All right, that's mixed up pretty good. A little bit of a breeze coming in the shop today. Strainer. Oh, oh crap. It's going to show you the inside the gun. Stupid. Smack myself in the face again. Gun's full. I just spilled a little bit out. This stuff is super sticky sticks to everything so I'm gonna wipe that up I was getting ready to film this and I was thinking to myself whatever you do don't get stuff on the camera and here I am flipping stuff around so I'm gonna put on my suit and get ready to go in and uh, when I get ready to go in it's gonna not be great for you guys to observe because I can't take the camera in here but for at least the primer stage of this I will uh, set the camera up out here and I don't know what you're gonna see but I'll let it, I'll at least let it run. All right, so I'm about ready to go in. I think I'm going to try to set you up over there, but I'll have on a full face mask. Yes, I know my filters need changed, uh, or at least the pre-filters, but the ones underneath aren't too bad. I just cleaned it up a little bit. You can tell I've done a lot of painting in that mask. And uh, a buddy of mine also has used it some. But I'm going to set you up over here. I'm going to try to set you up close because maybe you can see in. I don't know. Um, I wear a full Tyvek paint suit, you'll see. Obviously gloves, a couple layers of gloves. I generally have booties on my shoes so I don't paint my shoes, but I'm out. And I'll have the mask on and my Tyvek suit will have, it has a hood on it. So I try to keep this stuff off and be as safe as I can because I already know I'm not gonna live very, you know, super long, but why speed it up? So, all right, next thing I'll do is I'll be heading on in. So, uh, here's how I go in, just so you know, and uh, we'll go in and see how this goes. Yeah. 
So to answer any questions you might have, it's hot in there. Whew. Um, I don't think I want to go in yet, but you can see I got a good coat of primer on everything. Hanging stuff presents issues because you uh, constantly are trying to avoid uh, bumping your head into things. But I think I've got a pretty good first coat on. I think that's all I need. The gun ran out right when I finished in here. Actually, I put a little bit extra on uh, a couple of these pieces just to burn up what I had left. But I'm primed. Now I need to go out and uh, clean up the gun and the cup and everything. And I'll come back in and do my primer sealer. I do a white primer sealer because yellow is so hard to cover. So uh, it makes it a little bit easier to get coverage on the primer sealer. So I'm gonna head out and clean up and uh, get ready to prime seal. It'll take about 20 minutes or a little more to get all that done, which is about the right time for uh, the primer in here to dry enough that I can come back in and put the sealer on. And then in about the same amount of time, that 20 minutes or so, I can come back in and do the, uh, the paint. It, uh, it'll be ready for paint. All right, I had the same issue with the uh, primer sealer. It was uh, pretty much the whole bottom of the can was solid, but I've got it mixed up now. 
and it's good to go. This is a lot thinner. The primer's the hardest thing to clean up after because it's uh, just a lot thicker and it's a lot harder to, to do. So the primer sealer is a four to one ratio. So four parts of the sealer to one part of the hardener. And I'm gonna mix up slightly less than I did of the um, primer just because the sealer, it's just going on. I just wanna cover the gray primer with the, the white sealer so that the, uh, the yellow covers better. It doesn't have to be on thick, it's just gotta make it so that that gray primer is more of a white color. So this primer sealer pours a lot more like water. And thus, you get bubbles. So I gotta pour to make sure that the bubbles are above the line, which I just did. And then, handiest tool in the world, my buddy Rob gave me, to get these cans out, because these cans, a lot of these hardeners, uh, get pretty sticky when you open them and it's hard to get the cans open without destroying the cap so this uh, little handy tool and you punch uh, around your can when you open it to help it drain back in you can take your uh, caps off uh, as far as your lids and I suppose you could even use that as a hammer to tap I just use a regular hammer so same thing I've got to get the bubbles back above the line this is an important part of when you uh, with your stirring stick after you've put it in your mixing cup with the hardener in it don't put it back in your uh, contaminate your stuff. I've not done that, but I've heard of it happening and stuff's too expensive to, to mess with. So I'm pretty careful to try not to do that. I already changed out my gloves. They were other gloves were pretty well covered with primer. So I've got clean gloves. I wear two pair of gloves just because when you peel off that outside layer, if you only have one set on, you'll never get them back on because right now my hands are super clammy and you know how that goes. Guns clean, pretty clean. I didn't do uh, the best cleaning job on it just because uh, when I'm done today, because I'm gonna be going through three stages of the process here, when I'm completely done, I'll give the whole gun like a really good cleaning process. Got a little bit of solvent left down in the bottom of the cup. I wanna clean that out. So it's dry. Strainer. There's my white primer sealer. And I'm gonna head back in and uh, do that, but I'm not gonna bore you with looking through plastic and not being able to see what I'm doing. So, uh, be back out in a minute. All right, I just stepped back in. This is what the uh, primer sealer looks like. It's just a nice white color that will help uh, the, the paint cover better. So, got that done. Now I've gotta mix up and uh, get ready to to paint I'm on my second 32 ounce uh, bottle of water I'm sweating like crazy it's hot um, yeah so as I get the paint ready I'll be back all right I mixed up my my paint the ratio on this is eight four to one and on my cup I've used this cup so much because I can't find another eight four to one cup I got to get uh, get online Napa doesn't sell these anymore I just found out 
but my numbers wore off, but I know that's eight four to one, and I'm gonna go all the way up to five, so this will be almost a full cup. And I might need, even need a little bit more because I'm gonna do probably at least three coats. This is a single stage paint. I'll do other parts of it, the hood and different things. I'm doing base clear. But in the single stage I have found, I've got to do at least about three coats to get uh, get no shadowing, get a good coverage. So get set up here. Eight, and then I'll put four of the reducer in. So five, take this all the way up to five. mixing this last night we had uh, in Delaware Ohio which is close to where I live it's where I grew up they do a thing called first Friday so it's the first Friday every month they uh, shut down the downtown and have a big fair type of situation where they people come and display different things so they do old cars and they the tractor club the Delaware County Antique Farm Machinery Association they wanted tractors up there last night so we took tractors up I took grandpa's UB and uh, my buddy Eric took a John Deere that he had and Eric likes to always talk a little bit of trash as he should about uh, you know the Moline John Deere Case IH rivalry so end of the night we all load up. Eric's also got a beautiful square body, three quarter ton Chevy. That's a ri all original. It's just an amazing truck. Anyway, he pulled his tractor down there with it. And long story short, he goes over to pick up his tractor. And we're all loaded up, ready to go home. He calls us and says, well, it won't start. So I, a few of us went back over as we should have and uh, helped him get loaded up, pushed it on his trailer and he got it running this morning, he called me, but there might have been about 20 minutes worth of uh, just green bashing by me as we were pushing this thing up on his trailer and all that about if he needed, I could go get the moline and pull him and all in good fun. Just the way that we all like to uh, fight amongst the colors of our tractors. I like them all, but obviously I'm partial to this beautiful yellow and the prairie gold and uh so we had some fun with that last night with eric and uh i checked with him this morning he wasn't he he had some words back for me this morning last night he was more concerned about why his tractor wouldn't start this morning he was now that it's running he uh he had some comeback so it's all all in good fun so all mixed up Hardener, reducer. This is a full cup. I'm not even gonna show you how much is in there because it's almost up to the top. It's only about an inch. I'm gonna go in there and make things yellow. All right, two coats done. At this point, we're at 64 ounces of water I've drank and I don't have to pee, so it's hot. Um, I can say this, that I'm about ready to give you guys a really big treat. Um, even after two coats, we'll just go in here real quick and look, but I can say that if you were a painter at the Moline factory, how could you not look forward to going to work every day and spraying this beautiful yellow paint? 
everything's coating pretty well. It's looking looking pretty good. Um, I am going to do another coat. I'm a little thin on the middle of the pulley there, but I'm not really worried about that. I'm more worried about the areas that you can actually uh, you're going to actually see and that aren't going to have belts on them. So yeah, I mean, what is better than painting beautiful? Energy yellow or prairie gold. I, I I could be sitting in the pool right now on a float with an umbrella drink. Instead, I don't know why I just shut it off there, but instead I'm doing something that's a lot more fun. I'm painting energy yellow. So, it's a beautiful day. I'm going to put my last coat on here in a few minutes. I'm going to let that tack up some more before I go in there and hit my last coat. And I'll clean up my gun really good. And I'll let that dry 24 hours before I uh, pull that stuff out of there. And then I'll reload it with a bunch more parts down there. Another reason uh, I'm shooting single stage first rather than my base clear on my hood and stuff. For the simple fact, base clear makes a lot of uh, dust. If you look at the floor and with the filter over there, single stage is very sticky, really sticky. And so after shooting my buddy Chris's motorcycle parts, there was a lot of dust in there. I did a lot of cleaning in the booth to try to clean it up. But uh, the bottom line is, before I got into base clear again, I wanted to go in there and shoot single stage, put a sticky film on everything to hold down the dust so that I can keep going. And then when I do my single stage, I'm not blowing dust around uh, on the parts that I really care about. So I don't have to do a whole bunch of uh, sanding and other things to make them look better. All right, I just pulled my filter out of there. I said. That single stage is pretty sticky and you can see uh, the filters even sticking together but you can see how much goes on the filter going out talk about sweating I've had those gloves on for about two hours so my hands are all pruned up but so you can see the stickiness you can see the yellow tinge on all the visqueen in here but that also is holding down any dust I mean it basically is like glue Got the fan still running now with the filter off because I don't have any anything in the air anymore. Uh, so I just want to keep airflow going through. But you can see this is three good coats. I think it covered pretty well after three. I didn't go four. Um, I don't see any any light spots uh, on it. I'm not going to talk about the bottom side of this tank right here. There might be some runs, which I'm not real happy about, but luckily the gas tank is underneath the, uh, the hood, and I can always sand those out. So I knew I did that. I just I got it a little too wet there. But there it is, the beautiful yellow paint on these parts, and I will, uh, like I said, let these dry. 24 hours and then uh, move them out move another set in and uh, go from there um, I've got a bunch of little stuff left down here and the little stuff's the hard because it just takes a lot of time and then I got a lot that's going to be base clear um, so those will come after I get all that done and then all this will get uh, gloss black for on the engine parts so like I said I'll, I'll reload it and I'll get some more stuff in there for single stage and uh, and go from there I forgot there's a bunch of more up here there's a combination of single stage and uh, but I'm gonna base clear in that pile of stuff so parts every place all right, and I still have to clean up and get the rear end ready to paint. It's been sitting for quite a while, and that's all the drips I got under it, so I think I'm going to live with it. So that's where I'm at with this project for now. I, uh, I think I'm going to end this video here, and I'll make another one maybe when I base clear because I'll do the white and the yellow on the hood. So. Hopefully you're learning something. I'm not a professional painter by any means, by any means. So obviously this is just a hobby. And uh, so if you know, really know what you're doing, if you have comments to help me, great. I've, I've had some pretty good people teach me, I think. 
and uh, my products have uh, all turned out pretty well generally and uh, yeah I hope you enjoy enjoy this journey on this 114 as much as I am uh, again if you like what you're watching please like and subscribe I tell you I've been watching a lot of Moline Dan videos and uh, he's gonna get the Moline video uh, producer maker award of the year because that guy I don't you don't see me much my face much on these videos Dan doesn't care he just goes out there and he shows it and I love what he's doing it's doing a good job so it's a lot of fun I'm glad that multiple people are getting together and we're doing these videos about these mulling tractors so that down the road if you got a question you can look at one of these videos and kind of see how we did it and that will help you fix your problem um, so it's all about the love of these yellow tractors that are just just beautiful got a few of them parked in here still got to decide on the hood in the 955 but i think i'm going to paint it i think i just i can't live with it. i think i'm going to end up painting it while the booth's still up that'll be the next project so again thanks for watching please like and subscribe and until the next video